This is Michael Blackstone with Lee Talk Radio. Today I have some special guests and um, our most well-known guest here at the table is our Lee County Sheriff, Gary Parsons. Gary, why don't you introduce our second guest on this show and let's get into a, a subject that uh, definitely is affecting all of us and uh, get some great information that we can that we can use to better our communities and stuff like that. So, Gary? Yeah, I'm here with uh, my good friend, Jeff Harbor. He contacted me and uh, interested in about putting out some information about human trafficking, which is something we probably don't consider a problem in Lee County, but it's going on everywhere. And uh, he's got some points he wants to bring out. We're just gonna have a discussion here about uh, uh, the, the concerns people should have and to watch, what to look for where there might be a situation where human trafficking is occurring. So. Well, I uh, consider it a privilege of being with you gentlemen today. Uh, this is something that's been on my mind for quite some time after seeing the way that news articles go with the way that uh, shootings are occurring within the nation. And, you know, people will come up with a lot of excuses like, well, it'll never happen here. We're such a small town. But if I was looking for, say, children, young people or whatever, possibly I would consider a place like this because I would feel like their guard is down. You know, usually in cities, everyone is uh, generally upbeat about uh, crime and what happens, and they kind of expect it or maybe just kind of live with it. But here, we're not used to it. The Sheriff's Department, I think, does a fantastic job around the area. The sheriff and I have done a few other odds and ends together. Uh, I'm also involved with doing concealed handgun permits or if people have just purchased a firearm, they don't know how to use it, I'll do the best that I can to work with them. So I've worked with some of his officers before and Biggest thing that I'm thinking about doing is to show people that there is a way that you can defend yourself. But the biggest thing that I tell them, if there's any way possibility to get out of the situation, don't put yourself in that to call the police and let them take care of it. But when I think about these small children that have no way to defend themselves or to fight against something like that with people with the way that's doing sex trafficking or even adults too that are taken into this uh, trafficking organization to put into bondage, slavery, uh, they bring them into this country and they have to work out of debt and possibly they've got them working in places where they possibly get no or very little pay, they never will get out of debt. And, and you know, I think you're right, you need to define that, that, you know, human trafficking is, uh, you know, where you put someone under coercion or fear and force them to do sex acts or any type of act that's against their will. And so human trafficking is different than human smuggling. Human smuggling, you know, people hauling haul them across the border and tractor trailers, things like that, so it's a difference. But human trafficking can occur right here if someone has some type of uh, leverage or control over someone to force them to do things against their will. So. Right. And a lot of the people, too, that these people prey on, possibly they are into the country illegally or something is wrong, but generally, if something happens, they're not, uh, they don't feel comfortable about calling the police because it could get them into trouble or get them deported or whatever. So some time back, I even took a course through Mountain Empire Community College into getting my CDLs. And one of the courses or one of the videos that we did receive was what they call TAT, Truckers Against Trafficking. So can you imagine within the United States or up in Canada, how many eyes are out on the highways or in the truck stops to see if this is going on to where they can call the local authorities to come in and try to get this stuff stopped. But, you know, children are taken. Uh, there's different movies that have been on. It's about... Uh, people that are taken to other countries. Uh, but these little kids, it just, that is something beyond what I can fathom about the horror that they go through with this. And it's just a business. These people could care nothing less about the families or the child. It's just a business to them, something to make money on. And you were talking about uh, people being afraid to contact law enforcement or something. Like that. And that is the case. But we as people that are not involved with the situation, we need to have our eyes open looking for signs of this possibly going on you know children maybe being led around and looking afraid at the time and uh, or giving you looks of help me look for those types of things and uh always err on the side of caution and call us i mean just let us make a decision if there's a problem going on and uh, we'll certainly do that anonymously and uh, keep your name out of it mm -hmm. Well, another thing, too, that I think about doing are playgrounds, for example. People go, they take their children to a playground, and the thing that bothers me, and I used to work at another business, too, and of nights, whenever we would close down, a lot of the young ladies who were generally were uh, people who worked registers, they would go out to their cars, and I would offer to walk them to their car because a huge parking lot would be a dandy place for someone to pull up 
abduct somebody, take off, you never would see them again. Sometimes they would uh, accept my invitation, sometimes they wouldn't, but still I would stand in the door and watch until they got to my car safely. But, uh, but while you're at the, the playgrounds, it's a good time to be watching because there was something that I did see on Facebook sometime. A lady was sitting on a bench. A guy approached her and he said that he is doing an experiment. Do you think that your child, son or daughter, he didn't know which one it was, would come with me off the playground? Well, the lady says no, so there's no way that that would happen because we talked to them about not doing that. Well, the guy said, could I try this? said, I'm doing an experiment. She said, go ahead. I'm here you know, to watch how everything goes. Well, one thing that he had that she didn't consider was he had a little fuzzy puppy. So he goes over and starts talking. It was a little girl. And the next thing you know, he was walking off the playground hand in hand with this little child. Right. So you don't know, you know, what they tell them. And the woman was sitting there amazed that the child would do that. But these people who do things like this are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, with puppies, kittens, candy, uh, anything like that, a child has no idea to know what to look for. And out here, these people are sharp. You know, they're... They're not just the run-of-the-mill people. They know what to do. They know how to get away. They've got the contacts to get people either into this country. And in one movie that I did see here a while back, I think it said that in the United States, it's an over a billion-dollar industry in this trafficking. Yeah, and, uh, you know, not only the situations where children are abducted, you know, I'd ask people like people in the school system, teachers and things. Uh, I mean, this goes on in, in homes where family members are involved in this and forcing children against their will to commit acts. And, uh, you know, if you've got a child that's despondent, uh, misses a lot of school, you know, those are the type of things maybe that should be looked into uh, by either us or social services. And, you know, of course, you're a mandatory reporter. So I'm sure you'll report anything unusual, but look for those type of signs in homes. You know, I took, uh, I think it was one of your seminars or whatever down at Jonesville Middle School one day and I think one of the officers down there had mentioned something that I never thought about. For example, you're driving down the road, there's a van in front of you and it's a family. So how much information can you receive from that van? Well, you can look on the back of it and a lot of times they'll have the decals on the back window of the, the dad, the mother, maybe three children, may have a symbol on there that said soccer mom or may have a picture of a dog or something like that on there that people can also use against you. For example, if I'm following this family, I want those children, you know, I could do something possibly to where I could say, well, I'm coming to pick you up to take you to soccer. Your mom wants me to pick you up. And some of these even have the people's names on it. So, you know, I think sometimes it's good to put that on there in honor of your, your school or your children in school. But sometimes you need to be, a, be aware of this day and time that there's a lot of people out here that are preying on these children. And it's not also the children, it's teenagers. And it's not also little girls, it's boys too. Teenage boys, teenage girls that are being affected by this. So, you know, my opinion is be careful what you put on that people can see because they can use this against you. It's the same thing as with the internet. Look what goes on there. Right. With these predators right here that are enticing these kids to meet them at a spot or whatever. Right. Of course, this is slightly off subject, but people will be on vacation and put on Facebook, we're on vacation, and let everybody know their house is uh -huh. vacant. Well, if you're going to put something on there, wait till you get back from your vacation, then post your pictures and not put them, you know, we're having a good time and, and we're gone and let criminals know that they can come to your house. Well, another thing, too, that I think is very handy is calling your department, and an officer generally will come by and check your place. We will. But you have to let them know. Yeah. It's like the biggest thing, too, that a lot of people have trouble with, if they don't communicate, then how does anybody know how to help them? And I have been seeing this on TV, I'm not sure how, the little hand signal that a child can do if something is wrong, that people can get aware of to know that something is happening. But a lot of people too, you know, they don't want to be involved, but uh, I guess it would be a different story if some of their family was abducted. Right. And, and I'll do a quick plug for our senior wellness program, you know, while we're on here. We have a program at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, if you'll con you don't you know you don't have to be elderly we we do if there's someone younger person or something that we need to call and check on we certainly will and it's all done electronically and it's my voice and I ask you if you're okay and give you some prompts as to to what buttons to push if you are okay and if you don't respond then we'll come out and check on you but you can go to our website to, to Lee County Sheriff's Office and it's real easy you put your uh, cell number in or your home number and your name's not involved with it uh, as far as Anything else that can be released to the public. So it's a good way to have people checked on that, you know, you were, you're concerned about maybe living alone or something. 
Well, you know, the traditionalists and the baby boomers are all getting older. Right. Uh, right now you have Generation X, Generation Y, and Generation Z that are coming up right now, and it's a whole different world now. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these people, too, uh, uh, thoughts are changing, voting aspects are changing. But I think, too, people, uh, and I know your department does it, and I've been doing some, too, to where we work with people about doing concealed handgun permits. But that's to me, is the last resort. In case something happens, you cannot get away. Your life is in danger. You've got a right to protect yourself. And, uh, you know, I think people need to learn how to do this. So if they don't want to carry a firearm, at least carry something in a car with you. Road rage is terrible to where people run you off the road and come back. So if somebody does something like this, how would you protect yourself? And it happens. Well, look at the churches that are people that are breaking into, you know, firing. That has happened some in the past. I haven't heard of it here lately, but, you know, if other people weren't armed at that time, how many more people could have been taken away? Right. So, you know, I think you need, and even like in your own home, I also do some things with the NRA also, but they talk about having a safe room in your home to where if somebody comes in your home, everybody needs to know to go to that safe room, which is unable to uh, lock the door. You should have access to a firearm, access to a cell phone, and access to a set of keys to where hopefully you can call 911, you have a set of keys to throw out to the officer to get into the house, and you stay in there until that officer tells you it's safe to come out. And don't come out because the officer doesn't know who you are, and the officer may also have a canine with him. And right. from seeing some of those dogs, they don't like anybody. <laughs> right, right. So there's a lot of things that you can do to make you and your family safe, but it uh, seems like to me anymore it's getting to be more and more to where people need to have that in the back of their mind. Right. You know, there's some there's some interesting things as far as as people in their homes. You know, a, a lot of a lot of families have been affected by the opioid epidemic and drugs and and things like that um, to various degrees. And, and you know, when you have a, a loved one, whether it be a a, a sibling or a son or a daughter or something in your home, and they're doing drugs, you know it's hard to hide that for for very long i mean you, you kind of get the idea and stuff but when you know when we were looking at this subject of of human trafficking and things there was um what was interesting to me is there is actually um there's actually patterns that people start having and it, it has nothing to do with age to where if you're aware of those and can see those signs you can get help for um, for a family member that has fallen victim to one of these types of, of crimes. So a, just a quick little list of some of the stuff that's important. This is, uh, this is information that's put out by Virginia State Police, Homeland Security, the feds. They all, it's basically identical on all of their, their websites and resources and stuff. But, you know, uh, does a person appear disconnected from the family, friends, community organizations, or houses of worship, or, or churches? Um, has a child stopped attending school? Has the person had sudden or dramatic change in their behavior? Is a juvenile engaged in commercial sex acts? I mean, sometimes that's a tough one to, for a family member to know. Um, or they may be embarrassed that, that one of their, their children would be involved in such things. But these are these are not like gateway drugs or gateway things these are deep involved problems you know that uh, we have to be aware of is the person disoriented or confused or showing signs of mental or physical abuse does the person have bruises in various stages of healing is a person fearful timid or submissive does the person show signs of uh, having been denied food water sleep or, or medical care um, are they living in an un uh, suitable situation do they appear to be uh, coachable on what to say uh, in other words is somebody behind the scenes manipulating their thoughts and and what's coming out of their mouths so uh, these are these are just a few of the the things that are mentioned on these websites and and uh, Virginia State Police does have an actual human trafficking section on their website um, which is uh, vsp.virginia.gov forward slash human Dash trafficking. So I encourage people to to look at those kind of things um, and and learn about what you can see, so that then you can get the resources you need either from sheriff's department, other law enforcement, uh, e even even spiritual leaders or community leaders, people that are in the public that that have a 
a, a system of trust between that person and the, and the other. Um, you know, so like, like you were saying, Gary, a lot of times people are intimidated about law enforcement and stuff like that. I think we've had, uh, we've had conversations in, um, about different drug problems and stuff in the past. And I remember one, one time, you know, we were, we were, uh, having an interview about drugs and, um, I, I specifically asked, you know, what type of things are available to the, any person out there that is suddenly, maybe they've had an auto accident, they're hurt, their doctor prescribes them pain medication, 10 days into it, they are hooked, and then it just starts to spiral downhill. Now, the question is, is that person a criminal? Well, the answer is <coughs> no, they're not a criminal. Criminal pro things come as byproducts of that. They get addicted, they can't get their doctor to prescribe, they can't afford it economically, they go to the streets, now they're committing crimes to you know, fund their, their drug habit. That is all criminal. But if, uh, you, you know, you can help people to want to help themselves. And if you're in a situation where, you know, that person comes to you, they've gotten themselves trapped by uh, a drug, you know, do, uh, does that mean they're criminal? And I remember you saying, you know, unfortunately, uh, because of budgets and just various different things structured in the state that are, that are not necessarily in your direct control as a sheriff, but things, systems you have to deal with, the only thing you really have to offer them is jail. Yeah, and I mean, it's that, and that becomes a, that becomes a problem where people are, are maybe saying, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to a cop because they'll slap you in jail. Well, the, just, if you've gotten involved or if you've been trapped or if a person does get in, uh, snagged into one of these hideous folks that are, are, are doing these crimes, um, you need to reach out to anybody and and seek that, that resource, you know. And they can call me personally, my office, my, my number's 346-7753. Uh, There's no caller IDs on my office phones. We have caller IDs, people probably know, back in the 911 center. So if you don't feel comfortable t talking to the 911 center, call me personally. You don't have to give my name. You know, I, I'll give your name, but I'll, I'll try to help you if I can. I get calls about a lot of situations. I can't do anything. I make every effort, but some situations are, you just can't solve them real easily. Uh, people you're talking about on drugs, I have a lot of family members come and, and uh, you know, they want to get, put them in a mental facility or put them, well, if they're competent enough to answer the questions, the right questions to the evaluator, they're not going. And, uh, you know, and then sometimes jail ends up the alternative and maybe you can use that to force them into some type of rehab, but there's very few rehabs that that are affordable. I mean, if you if you got forty thousand dollars, there's places across the country that you can take people, but uh, hard to get into these uh, low cost programs. And, uh, but Absolutely. there are some out there. And, we'll and I, I don't know uh, on on this on the subject of the human trafficking and and human smuggling. I mean, the person coming out of that, the victim. That has been trapped in this once they get free of it i mean these there is such i mean there's wagon loads of mental health issues that's going to go along with that mm -hmm. that and then again you know what what resources are available and stuff like that i think i think most of the time the the immediacy of the situation is is top priority meaning if you know about something don't just sit back in the dark, like, you know, and bury your head in the sand and just let it go on um, because you don't want to get involved. You know what I'm saying? We're living with the, with the internet and, and things, things have changed. All of us are in the same basic age group. And these things, when, when I think back when I was in school and high school, these problems didn't exist. I mean, the, the worst kind of thing was maybe somebody smoked tobacco or somebody smoked marijuana, but you didn't have all of these, um, things where, you know, kids are coming to school like a little pharmacist and with all of their, their mom and dad's medicines and, and, uh, there, there's so many pressures out there that we didn't experience. So the internet and the fast pace of, of our society in America and stuff is, has moved things forward to the point where you, we're seeing a lot more. 
we're seeing things at, at our age group that we we can't believe we're seeing, you know, mm -hmm. happen. And of course, you and as as the sheriff, uh, I mean, I'm sure you see and hear of stuff that's just. Oh yeah, and I and I think you know, instances of uh, human trafficking in our county, if, if they are occurring, it's surrounding drugs. You know, mm -hmm. denying people drugs in return for sex acts, uh, those type of things. So, drugs are unfortunately a big factor in most of the problems we have in our county, and it's tough because it's hard to stop something you can make in your kitchen. You know, most other drugs before the pill problem. I mean. It's still a problem, but doctors had to prescribe it or somebody had to bring it in from somewhere. Now, you can make it in the outbuilding, make it in the kitchen. It's hard to handle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with these drugs, they add something else into it, unless I'm not correct, that, that is very lethal to a person. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the next time, you know, somebody has passed with this, but, you know, they don't care. It's a money, it's money right. business. Right. And the, dr the drugs, you know, not everything can be blamed on drugs, but the drugs are a they're an initial tie-in i mean these people that that grab folks or are are extorting them for uh, exploitation of one way or the other there's drugs involved either they're drugging the person up so that they do things that are byproducts of other other stuff such as porn porn movies whatever they want to be doing or they're they're drugging them up to take them somewhere they're you know it's just an ongoing thing so either way you go you have multiple fingers you've got drugs you've got you've got the 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 mental illness or the mental problems that are going to come from this just in our county um what resources would we have that we could offer to uh, to uh, citizens of the county if they were in and they were coming out of the situation do we have programs that are available here locally well frontier health is our local mental health provider and they have counseling and and different uh, type of things, meetings, and uh, to, to, I mean, they'll look at your situation, evaluate, and determine the best course to pursue. So. Now, are those are those one-on-one -on -one type of, of uh, therapy or counseling sessions, or do they actually have? Uh, yeah, they have both. I mean, depending on the situation, you know, they've got uh, several professional counselors on hand down there. Uh, so, and you know, if we if we pick someone up. Uh, on a mental petition, they're the ones that evaluate them and make the determination if they're going to a mental facility or not. So, mm -hmm. they're our major uh, mental health provider. So, but I guess what we're saying is keep your eyes open, ears open. Uh, if you see anything that you don't feel right, usually if you don't feel right or look right, it's not right. And, uh, and uh, Jeff, you got anything you want to finish? We up were with? usually told too in some of the courses that I went through that generally the ladies have got a different type of intuition that men evidently don't have so they say sometimes you know if they feel like something is wrong maybe you need to listen but the biggest thing that i can think of too is be aware of your surroundings mm -hmm. whether or not you're pulling into your home at night look around before you get out uh you know people's have their homes broken into that that's a big mental thing with all people i had that to happen many years ago and i still to this day when i go in my house there's a couple things that i look for and if something disappears where a light goes across in front of the window, we're heading back the other way. Mm -hmm. I'll call his department and I'm gonna stay out of it. But uh, but again, I think the uh, largest thing is, is I just hate the thought about what these kids are going through. I can't imagine what a parent would go through to know that their child is somewhere. They don't know what's going on with them. They don't know how they're being treated. Uh, I don't even know what horror that their mind goes through. So that's why I called the sheriff and just asked him if he'd be interested in doing something like this just to get people to realize that these things do happen. It can happen in Pennington Gap, Virginia, Dryden, Jonesville, St. Charles, Keokie. It can happen anywhere just as well as it can happen anywhere else. And if it happens, it's too late to bring it back. So why not be prepared, get your family prepared with it, and just as you say, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, I've got myself to where I go to outings or whatever. I'm watching other people too to see if somebody possibly set something down. I guess I've watched too many cop shows, well, that's you know. A good way to do, but uh, <laughs> but the, if they set something down and walk away from it, then we're going the other direction, you know. Mm -hmm. but, and well, uh, we're going to post this on Facebook, on our Facebook site. So uh, you folks, if you want to comment on it, if there's any other subject you'd like for us to get together and discuss, uh, you know, that you're interested in, if you'll put it in the comments on the Facebook page, we'll take a look at it and maybe we can put together something else on different topics. And then in, in conclusion, um, anything to do in 
and around uh, this subject or, or any subject, um, once again, go to LeeCountySheriff.net is the official sheriff's website. Um, Facebook is also under Lee County Sheriff. Um, you are able to go on the website. There is a page on there for anonymous tips where you don't have to have your identification at all uh, mentioned, and that'll go straight into uh, your um, investigators and stuff that they can be able to start uh, proceedings with. And then also you'd mentioned your phone number direct into your office, which doesn't have a caller ID, so people can freely, freely call you. That's on the contact page of the website. So, so any citizen in the county, go to the Lee County Sheriff dot net website and all of those resources are, are listed there we thank you both for being guests and uh we'll call this a wrap thank you thank you for your time